Uh, hi. So on behalf of uh, authors, I'm going to present this paper. Uh, mostly, I would say the paper is based on two keywords from the cryptography, nonce and fault analysis. So they're trying to going out from the nonce barrier and introduce the fault attack when nonce becomes a countermeasure in the fault attacks. That's the overall thing. So let's start with the nonce. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> in the sense that uh, when Rogai defined that what is the basic principle of nonce to be used in the cryptography, it says that uh, in every application of the crypto algorithm, the nonce should be unique. But sometimes it's uh, with some terms and conditions, people, crypto theory people try to utilize it uh, with some non-uniqueness feature for a couple of times or sometimes for uh, uh, a chain of messages. So that's the main uh, uh, thing they try to exploit in, the, uh, in this area. On the other hand, fault analysis, what I understand that uh, in a execution of the algorithm, you try to inject the fault in a particular place, and then you observe the outcome after that fault injection, and then analyze with the good result. That's the overall three step of the fault analysis. So what happens with this? Basically, if you can inject a fault in a round, say, uh, n minus one, that means you can reduce your cryptanalysis from an end round cipher to some n minus i -th round of cipher. So basically, you are reducing the number of rounds by injecting fault. That's the motivation. There are different kinds of fault attacks in the extension, but most popularly used attack is the differential fault. So basically, differential means you have a, a good run of the algorithm, and you are replaying with the same plain text in the next run, and you are injecting the fault in a particular place. and then find out the differential of the two done, and then analyze, find out the key. So this is like this. So you have the uh, message, which is going to be encrypted, getting the C, and as an attacker, you reapply the same message, and in some round, you, in some place, you inject some fault, and then get the faulty output, try to correlate the C and C, dot, C star. This is the overall idea. So that's why I already said that this basically implies that you are going to uh, keep to analyze a reduced round and cipher. So, so that's the, mm -hmm. okay. Then, mm, so once you have a nonce in the execution, that means at every, execution, you are changing your input value so that attacker cannot replay with the same input to inject the fault. That is the nonce defined. So in presence of nonce, theoretically good nonce, your assumption violated, so fault attack cannot work in that sense. That's the story. So once you try to replay, you cannot replay because you have some nonce which are different in these two cases, so you cannot encrypt the same message to get some relation. Now, what you can do to, to go out from the nonce barrier? We can either misuse the nonce, we can bypass the nonce, or we can avoid the nonce. The same authors have two different works to one, the first one, they presented in Indocrypt 2014. They say they basically try to misuse, try to exploit the misuse of nonce. So the, the algorithm develops, there are some, AE stands for authenticated encryption. So there are some authenticated encryption schemes where the inventors define that you can use the nonce for a uh, few amounts of time, say for 20 messages or 30 messages, you can use the same nonce. So they try to exploit that 
uh, misuse basically. They, th that means for executed runs, you are using the same nonce, that means the same fault attack can be applied there. In the nonce bypass thing, it's another, there are some type of authenticated encryption schemes which says that if your tag does not match at the end, means the cipher text is not authenticated, means when you are decrypting, then also you can release your output, faulty output. The sense of that algorithm was basically, uh, sometimes you have a big message, and when you are receiving the big message, you need to store them somewhere, somewhere to authenticate it. And if you go to store the whole thing, you, uh, a small device may not have a, those amount of storage to store the whole message. So these encryption schemes provides you, uh, allows you to, to release, the, uh, release the decrypted message before authenticating it. So they basically, the, the, in this work, they tries to exploit that, that unauthenticated message outcome. So during decryption, you have the nonce, but it will allow you to output the message if it is not authenticated. So you use the same, apply the same nonce during decryption for consecutive execution and exploit that to find out the correlation. And on the third one, which is going to be present here, this is more generic. There are, again, some kind of authenticated encryption scheme where, uh, where people define that you have a nonce, and nonce is a part of your input message, and the rest of the part is, say, a counter, which is incrementing by one by one, and that nonce part will be fixed for a, a, a big message means the message means a whole chunk of message what is going to be encrypted and authenticated at that time. So they basically, uh, and also you can, you can encrypt those, uh, the full messages with different chunks in parallel execution. Means you have uh, same permutation function, say AES, you are executing AES for n different times in parallel uh, using different counter value and the same nonce. Okay, so they introduce how to avoid these nonce in this kind of authenticated encryption scheme. So divide and rule, that's, that's their uh, motivation basically. So here is their main idea. So instead of one fault here, they are trying to inject two faults. At the beginning, they try to inject some fault to make the input similar with the other execution. So. Technically, in this algorithm, you have a fixed part and the counter value is incrementing. So in the first place, they try to inject some fault in the counter which is going to be incremented for every message. So that counter will uh, make, uh, will basically, uh, by fault, will, uh, will make the input with some another instance of the same algorithm. And in the second place, the, they, they inject the second false as, uh, as you have in the fault attacks, means somewhere in the round. So here is the more idea uh, here in the picture. So let's say the parallel, parallel encryptions, so counter value AX, X plus I up to X plus N, and rest of the parts of this input are same norms, using the same norms or some domain parameters. These parts are same. So what you can, and then, then parallelly you are using uh, the same parameters and functions, say ES or any other cipher algorithm to find out, to generate the final output. Sometimes the output can be truncated. So what they are doing in the first case, they are, they are placing a fault here, injecting a fault here, means at the counter values. So injecting this fault in this counter value uh, means that they, they try to inject in a particular byte, say, so that that byte transfers this whole part to some of other execution of this chain so that they can find out the, the relationship between, say, if, if this one x plus i transfers to x, that means this guy, this path, and this path will be the same. 
the input itself. And in the second fault, they basically inject the fault here uh, as per standard fault analysis algorithm and then tries to relate the internal state and finally they get the internal differential fault analysis. That's the overall idea. So as the case study, they pick uh, algorithm, the algorithm, which is uh, uh, the PIC algorithm. It is a candidate in the CSR competition in second round, but uh, this is not, went out in third round. <laughs> not, uh, yeah, so, so due, uh, here is nothing to say. So main, th main idea is it's parallelizable and counter mode, what I explained before already. And then here is one story that uh, this went out. The algorithm is not no longer in the Caesar competition. Um, another thing, uh, nothing to say here. So here is overall the relationship between what I explained the parallelized encryption versus this exact al algorithm. So here all these inputs, see this counterpart is only changed from every instance. Rest of the inputs are same. N stands for nonce, K stands for key, some key, etc. P D is some domain parameters. So only this counter value are changing, and then encryption happen in the cases that uh, basically you have the plain text extra with the part of the uh, cipher text, part of the encrypted value, and then generated the C, and the rest of the blocks will go uh, go down for the authentication path, and then finally authentication tag is generated here. And here is the idea about how that uh, epic algorithm constructed. It's basically 512 bit states, so basically you have four AES blocks uh, put in, uh, put in, in four parallel uh, session, and then they have 20 rounds instead of 10 rounds of AES. And every uh, every two rounds, they they alters the columns in uh, each other. So that is basically the algorithm how it works. So you have four AES blocks, let's say now, and after two rounds, one and two. After two round two rounds, the this this block these columns are shuffled around others. So that way the algorithm is defined. Here is little bit detail about how they define the distinguisher, how they're playing the internal differential. So as I explained, basically they're trying to inject the fault at the counter first and then try to find out that, uh, that uh, the change of that counter matches with one, which particular, which particular uh, uh, column of this AES uh, execution and then trying to find out the distinguisher uh, to to perform the fault analysis. So basically equalize and differentiate what I already explained. So basically they inject fault, equalize it J say or any other J and then trying to differentiate here. Here is more detail about that. Uh, interested people can go and read the, from the paper. Encounter fault analysis using differential. So the same, same thing came up again. So basically here, main idea is sometimes uh, you can say that when you are injecting the fault at the uh, first place, then how do you guarantee that the faulted input is matched with one of the, uh, one of the other branch of that? So they ensure that the counter is going to be changed from one to 255. So the main requirement of this attack is that you need to have at least a message which is a 255 block of AES. So, 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 so if they inject a fault in the byte, that means that byte, faulty byte will map in one of the value from one to 255, what is already in the chain. So, so that can be used as the uh, as the fault-free execution, and then they will use the, their one as the faulty, uh, faulty execution, and then try to find out the distinguisher and correlation. Overall, that's the story. These are much more detailed. I do not want to go. And then finally, uh, they have they shown some experimental results on epic different versions. 
pick 64 indicates the 64 bit key, 80, 84 bit key, and 128 bit keys. And after their analysis, they soon that uh, if you have a 255 blocks of message encryption, and you can implement this uh, fault attack, inject a fault in round 17 or round 16 kind of place, then the, the complexity or the state space reduced from 64 bit 2 power 64 to 2 power 16.14, and in this case, 2 power 50 only. And this is, this is estimated because this amount of runs they cannot perform in their uh, environment yet. So that is the estimation based on these two results. Here is their experimental data, a little bit more detail. So here is the conclusion. So overall, uh, main thing is the execution with counter-based modes where you have some nonce. Nonce plays a role to counteract against the differential fault attack, but they shown that if nonce is misused or nonce can be avoided, then counter type of execution or parallel executions are, uh, are, are attacked by the fault analysis. Here is the author. <laughs> he is unfit now. So, yeah. very ent enthusiastic guy, but unfortunately, after getting <laughs> all arrangements, he cannot make it. So, on behalf of his, I'm going to present. That's all. Thank you. Thank you very much.